Assalamu alaikum viewers. Welcome to Virtual University. In today's lesson, we are going to talk about interpreting visual data. And as usual, the lesson will be in two halves. The first half will deal with interpreting the data and second, how to make comparisons. Now, uh, as you all know, one can communicate through words, through signs, through pictures. And today we will show you some other means of visuals. Uh, some means of communication which are primarily visual. And among these are graphs, charts, diagrams, tables and maps. Now, most uh, textbooks include tables, graphs, maps, etc. And remember, they are all aids. They are aids to help you understand and interpret the material that you are reading. Because of the importance of visuals and their possibility of being misinterpreted, you will see first how words and figures can be converted into visuals of one kind or another and second you will learn to read accurately these common aids. Now we will show you an example. It will show you how information which consists entirely of words and figures can be converted into a visual. You will see on your screen a paragraph. I'll read it out and then see if you can convert that information into a visual form. And you will notice the difference. Reading that information in printed form and looking at that information in a, in a visual form, uh, in a non-linguistic form. Now, our experience is that after listening to an hour's lecture, students begin very rapidly to forget the information given them. 24, 24 hours after the lecture, most of the students will have forgotten 75% of the information. After 48 hours, the amount the students remember has usually sunk to 15%. Yet, if the students review the information by noting the key points in the first place and then reading over or discussing or using their notes, the retention levels are as high as 70 to 85 percent. Now, here you were presented uh, the findings in words and numerals. Now, let's put these findings into graph form so that you can see them better. You will see the same thing in graphic form and you will realize that retaining all that information that you read earlier was difficult. But one look, one glance at the graph, it made the whole information very clear and it is easy to remember as well. Now, one of the uh, ways in which information is uh, presented is in the form of tables. The purpose of a table is to give the reader numerical information at a glance. And tables are used to show various kinds of information in clear, compact columns. Now, you are all familiar with uh, a timetable. You had one in your school and in your college. 
it was a plan of the whole week how classes uh, were scheduled in the same way you are familiar with airline uh, airline and train timetables and you are also familiar with tables in mathematics physics or chemistry and you know that tables are useful for quick reference but they require careful reading now when you read a table you have to keep a few things in mind number 1 read the table first read the title of the table and the title will tell you what information is shown in that table a lot of students uh rush to read the figures without reading the title and it is from the title that you get the information that the table is showing number 2 always look at the footnote given at the end or bottom of the table it will explain or give additional information that is necessary for an accurate interpretation of the data so number 1 the title number 2 the footnote which is given at the end or the bottom of the table number 3 you must ask yourself if the information given in the table is reliable and for this you must check the source of information in the table usually the source is also given in uh, most tables do carry uh, the source number 4 after that look at the heading of each column be sure you understand exactly what each heading refers to to what is included in each column also notice the units that are used these could be in terms of numbers money weights percentages dates sex countries etc etc the units may also vary from column to column and finally number 5 you must read the figures carefully and interpret them accurately on your screen you will see a table which is taken from yorki a study skills for students of english and answer the questions that follow by writing true or false but first read the table look at the table very carefully now number 1 the first 5 uh statements in the first five statements you just have to say whether the uh, the statement given is true or false according to the table right you have to refer to the table again and again the first statement this table refers to the percentage of the total united states population now is this statement true or false it's false number 2 judging from the table the annual death rate has been reduced by slightly less than half since 1900 judging from the table the annual death rate has been reduced by slightly less than half since 1900 now is that statement true if you refer to the uh, table is it is it this what the table is showing yes it is it is about the death rate being reduced this is what the table shows you number 3 heart disease has consistently been the major cause of death look at the different columns look at the column the first column where it lists heart disease and then you look at the figures and you will notice that it has consistently been 
the major cause. So, this statement is true. Number four, the death rate for infants in 1977 was 10.7%. Well, simple, just refer to the infant mortality. There you will find the word mortality, infant mortality. Look for that. Mortality means death. The death rate for infants in 1977 was 10.7. It's true. The statement is true. And the last statement, typhoid fever has been completely eliminated as a cause of death. Just refer to the column typhoid fever and see what are the figures for 1977. What are the figures in the earlier years? And see if the, the statement given you is true or false. Well, it's a false statement. Right. Now, from number, uh, statement number 6 to 10. Over here, true. You have to state whether these statements are true or false. Number 6. Since 1940, the annual death rate for automobile accidents has remained about the same. Since 1940, the annual death rate for automobile accidents has remained about the same. I think it's true. Number seven, the reduction in deaths since 1900 has been greater for tuberculosis than for pneumonia. True or false? It's true. Number eight, the annual death rate for cancer was about two and a half times greater in 1977 than in 1900. True or false? True. If you look at the figures. Number nine. The most serious childhood disease in the first part of the 20th century apparently was typhoid fever. The most serious childhood disease in the first part of the 20th century, apparently was typhoid fever. True or false? True. And the last one, the abbreviation NA means not applicable. I shall not tell you this one. You search for the answer in the table, in the footnote, and you find it out for yourself. Now, we'll move on to another way of showing information is through graphs. A graph illustrates a relationship between at least two things, one of which is measured on a vertical axis and the other or others on a horizontal axis. Now, look at the following graph, which is again taken from the same book, and answer the questions that follow. First, look at the graph carefully. Now, answer the first five questions by writing true or false, and the last five by writing the information. The first one, specific years are indicated on the vertical axis. Look carefully. Are specific years indicated on the vertical axis? Uh, I hope you know the difference between vertical and horizontal. Being science students, it shouldn't be difficult. Vertical is one that goes straight up. Horizontal, like this, goes across. All right? And it's false. Number two, the statement number two. The legend shows how many men finished elementary school, high school, and college. Now, the legend 
This is a different meaning of the word legend. We came across the word legend in our, I think, first lesson, where we said that legend is a story which is based on, uh, which is a false story, which is based on a myth or some imaginary character. This is the second use of the word legend, and it means a legend on a graph are the words that explain, they give you, these are the explanatory words on a, on a graph or a map. The legend shows how many men finished elementary school, high school and college. Is that what the graph shows you? Number three, the mean income of high school graduates is consistently higher than that of elementary school graduates. Uh, by graduate, over here, it does not mean somebody with a BA degree. Graduate means anybody who has studied in a school, in an elementary school, who passes out from the elementary school, primary school, high school, secondary school, right? So don't be stumped by the word graduate. Number three, statement number three, the mean income of high school graduates is consistently higher than that of elementary school graduates. The statement is true. Number four, college graduates earn the highest income. College graduates earn the highest income. And it's a true state. And number five, the graph shows, this graph shows that female college graduates earn more money than male high school graduates. Look at the graph carefully. Is this what it shows? No, it's a false statement. Now the rest of the sentences, the rest of the statements, you will have to just look at the graph carefully and pick out the figures. You write them down, you jot them down in your notebook. In 1965, uh, 1956, sorry, the difference in mean income of elementary school and high school graduates was, look at the graph, and according to the graph, it's about $1,250. Number seven, in 1976, this difference became about 1,720. Number eight, in 1961, a college graduate earned a mean income of about $10,000. Number nine, the mean income of a college student in 1966 was about, it's around 12,000. And the last statement, in the years between 1961 and 1976, about how much did the income of college student increase? How much did the income of college students increase? And you notice that this increase is quite phenomenal, 6,500. Now that was a, one type of graph. Now you will look at another graph, which is a bar graph. It is similar to the line graph, except that the bars are used instead of dots and lines. And these can extend from vertical or the horizontal axis. This graph gives you data about the world. And it is the year 1979, a long time ago. Many of you were not even born at that time. Right, look at the bar graph. 
Look at the bar graph. Now, answer the first five statements. Check on the graph and see if the statement that is on your screen, does it tally with the information that the bar graph shows? The first one is, this graph shows the number of speakers of all the important languages of the world. This graph shows the number of speakers of all the important languages of the world. True. The number of speakers is shown on the vertical axis. The number of speakers is shown on the vertical axis. No. Number three, the number of speakers is indicated in millions. Example, 100 means 100 million. True. Number four, there are twice as many speakers of English as of French. There are twice as many speakers of English as of French. False. Number five. There are two languages which are spoken more than, by more than 300 million speakers. There are two languages which are spoken by more than 300 million speakers. And the statement is true. Now, the rest of the statements, you answer the questions by writing on the line that are provided, but you can note them down in your notebook. About how many native speakers of English are there in the world? Now, this is according to the 1979 almanac, right? Rather dated. And according to the bar graph, it is something like 370 million. Number seven. What languages have about as many speakers as Arabic. Very simple. Look at the bars. Which language is more or less the same? Has as many speakers as Arabic. And it is German and Portuguese. Number eight. Which dialect of Chinese has the most speakers? Which dialect of Chinese has the most speakers? And you will have noticed that it is Mandarin. Mandarin is one of the dialects spoken in mainland China. Number nine, there are about twice as many speakers of Urdu as of and you look for a bar graph, which is a bar, not a graph, a, a bar which is longer in size as compared to Urdu. And you have, will have noticed that it is Malay Indonesian. And number 10, which language ranks fifth in total number of speakers? Which language ranks fifth in total number of speakers? And it is Urdu. Right? Now, I must point out to you that this is from uh, the World Almanac of 1979. So, the information given to you is rather dated. Right? But that was not our purpose over here. The purpose was to make you familiar with looking at graphs and interpreting the data. You have to have this skill. It is also part of your reading skill. Now, you will look at a map. Map reading is also a skill. 
a lot of information is there in, in the lines that, that you see. But you have to have the skill of interpreting what is given there in those lines. Now, the map is about Japan. And you know that Japan is in the east. It's in the far east. That's the word that is used in the far east. And if you look at the map, you will notice that it is composed of four major islands. The biggest island is Honshu. Look at the map and write down the names of the other three, other three islands. Very simple, it's in bold type and the names are Kayushu, Shikoku and Hokkaido. Now, which island is northernmost? That is, which island is to the north? The northernmost island is Hokkaido and the southernmost is Kyushu. All right. Number two, Japan is surrounded by an ocean and three seas. Can you name them? There is a large mass of water to the east of Japan and the name of the ocean is Pacific and there are a number of seas, three seas that surround Japan. They are the Philippine Sea, Philippine or Philippine and the Sea of Japan and the East China Sea. Which sea is to the west of Japan? It's the Sea of Japan. And to the southeast? The Philippine Sea. Number three. Which is the country nearest to Japan? It is South Korea. How far is it from Japan? Approximately 150 kilometers. Number four. Question number four. What other countries are close to Japan? North Korea, right? Approximately how far are these countries from Japan? The closest is North Korea, which is 400 kilometers. Now, what directions are they from Tokyo? They are in the west. How far is the island of Hokkaido? You work out which direction is Hokkaido from Korea. Alright. On Hokkaido, name one city that is due west of Koshiro and one that is north of Hakodate. Look on the map and spot these. Number six. How many cities in Japan have a population of one million or more. What are their names? And there are six cities. Osaka, Tokayo, Kobe, Kyoto, Nagoya and Yokohama. How far is Nagoya from Tokyo? It's approximately 390 kilometers. Number eight, the latitude of Kyoto is 35. What is the longitude? Number nine. What are the latitude and longitude of the northern tip of the island of Hokkaido? Number ten. Approximately how far is it from the southern tip of Kyushu to the northern tip of Hokkaido? Approximately 1,890 kilometers. Mutsube is at the tip of Honshu is at the northern tip of Honshu. 
and the city of Nagasaki is at the western tip of Kyushu. Look at the charts, study them and decide whether these statements that I am going to read out are true or false. Number one, in Asia, the production of softwood timber is more important than the production of hardwood timber. True or false? False. B. The largest Asian country produces three times as much as paper pulp as Europe. False. Number C. Asia produces three times as much paper as much paper pulp as Europe. True or false? False. Number D. The producers of timber are shown on the vertical axis of the graph. True. The cubic meters of wood produced are indicated in millions. For example, 50 means 50 million cubic meters. And it's a true state. Now, you looked at maps, graphs, bar charts, tables and these were visual aids. These are aids and you as a reader must be skilled in interpreting the information that is given in graphs and charts. And as I said earlier, you must read carefully and interpret accurately the information that is given in such charts, tables. Now, we will move on to, another, to the second half of our lesson and that is how to make comparisons. Years ago when you were in school, you learned about making comparisons in English, right? And there are several ways of showing that similarities and differences exist between or amongst things. The regular comparative and superlative are the descriptive words. And these are formed, whether they are adjectives or adverbs, these are formed as follows. We usually add ER or EST to words which are of one syllable. For example, take the adjective new. Now this is an absolute form. And by showing comparison, you add ER, the comparative part. And if you want to show the third degree, the superlative degree, you add EST. So it is new, newer, newest. Old, older, oldest. Big, bigger, biggest. And with adverbs, it is soon, sooner, soonest, late, later, latest. Now this is very uh, easy and it reminds you of what you did in school. Now, there is another way of showing comparison or the superlative degree, the third degree. And that is by adding the words more or most in front of words with three or more syllables. Now the word interesting, interesting, more than one syllable. So what do you do if you get a word like this? You don't add ER and EST, but you add the word more or you add the word most. More for comparative and most for superlative. The word interesting, you want to show the second degree, it's more interesting. The third degree, most interesting. Convenient, the word convenient, it becomes more convenient and most convenient. And it's the same with the word beautiful. Beautiful becomes more beautiful and most beautiful. The adverbs easily becomes 
more easily and most easily, not easier or easiest, but more easily and most easily, carefully, more carefully, most carefully. Now, words with two syllables may be like what we have just gone through, in that they, uh, that they will add the ending er and est. And if they end in y, it will be ly or le or er. Most of the remaining words take more and most in front of them. <coughs> Example, words ending in y. Happy. It becomes happier, happiest, funny, funnier, funniest. Those ending in ly, l, early, earlier, earliest, friendly, friendlier, friendliest. And then you've got those ending uh, with ow, shallow, shallower, shallowest, narrow, narrower, narrowest. Those ending with le, it becomes able. Abler, ablest. Gentle, gentler, gentlest. And the same with er. Clever, cleverer, cleverest. Now, please notice that two syllable adverbs which end in ly take more or most. For example, quickly. It's not quicklier and quickliest, but it becomes more quickly and most quickly, slowly, these adverbs take more slowly, most slowly, badly, more badly, or most badly. And there are a few more examples, such as the word careful, careless, boring, awful, complex, more complex, most complex. Now, there are some common adjectives some common two-syllable adjectives which can have either type of formation. For instance, the word common. You can write commoner, you can have commoner and commonest. And you can even have more common or most common. Right? So, notice that there are some that take both types. You can add er or est and add more and most. The word handsome, you can have handsomer, handsomest, and you can have more handsome and most handsome. Polite, politer, politest, is the politest boy. More polite, most polite, and in the same way the word quiet, quieter, it's quieter in here, quietest, more quiet, and you can even have the word more quiet or most quiet. Now, there are a small number of adjectives and adverbs that form the comparative and superlative degrees using a different stem. And these irregular comparisons are, and you will see on your screen, a list of such words. The adjectives are bad, far, good, many. Bad becomes worse, worst. Far becomes further or farther or furthest or farthest. Good becomes better, best. Many becomes more and most. And adverbs like badly becomes worse, worst. Little becomes less and least. Much becomes more and most, well becomes better and best. Now, there are many reasons for using comparisons in discourse. They may be used to show equivalence, more things when things are more or less, the e uh, more or less equal, equivalence. You can show non-equivalence or you can show one item when it is compared with others and sometimes parallel, parallel of increase. Now for showing equivalence, 
the following words or constructions are used are used to show equivalence that is the same and you have phrases like as big as whatever the word in the middle as as or are similar even each as many as equal to either as much as is like all now we will illustrate these in sentences example look at these sentences third generation computers can do a thousand time as many calculations as first generation computers notice the phrase as many dash as this is showing equivalence in the next sentence microcomputers are as efficient as mini computers and the phrase as efficient as is showing equivalence that microcomputers are as efficient same as mini computers in efficiency number 3 the sentence number 3 the term processor is the same as the word as efficient as same as in number 4 is like number 5 similar these are all words phrases showing equivalence number 6 as much number 6 a microcomputer can sometimes cost as much as a mini computer here the phrase as much as in number 7 it is both both and they show you equivalence number 8 can be compared to this phrase is also used to show equivalence between two things to show that they are equal and number 9 the word same the word same shows equivalence and number 10 equal so these are irregular ways of showing similarity of showing equivalence now there are a group of words constructions which are used used to show non equivalence non equivalence means not being the same and these are not as big as or not as great as the word greater than were uh, more than neither nor not as much as not equal to unequal or unequally unlike not all all right look at examples and these examples show you how you can use the same the phrase not as difficult as is bigger and more expensive than less than fewer neither right unlike not the same not and we have constructions to show that one item when compared with others and we use the superlative and the word is the most the least look at the examples number 1 is the word fastest and in number in the sent, second sentence it's the the phrase most commonly number 3 least difficult in the same way we have ways of showing parallel increase and the words are the more the less example very nice two examples the bigger the more complex the smaller the less challenging and you will see an exercise on your screen which shows you have to decide whether each sentence expresses equivalence non equivalence or the superlative and you can do this exercise on your own you just have to underline the uh, the phrase which either shows equivalence or non equivalence or the superlative and with that we come to the end of today's lesson in today's lesson you looked at uh, uh, visual data and how to interpret graphs charts tables all textbooks carry the, this uh, this kind of information and you as a skilled reader should be able to interpret them and the second half we looked at words which express a degree 
a degree of equivalence or non-equivalence or su the superlative degree. All the best. See you next time. Allah Hafiz.